Bitcoin is radically discontinuous with the past. Let's take one simple example. Personhood. Personhood is required for financial ownership. In order to own money, in order to control funds, in order to have a bank account, to receive a bill, to pay someone, you must be a person. Everywhere in the world, in every payment and financial network that exists, people own money. They may own it in the form of corporations, but that's just people grouping together. They may use proxies and agents and things like that, but that's just people working together. Bitcoin does not require personhood. A software agent can own money. A piece of software can be autonomously controlling money without any human intervention. This is completely unheard of in the history of man. We have never seen what happens next. Here is a little thought experiment. Let's take three radically disruptive technologies and mash them together. All right. Who has heard of these? Bitcoin. Yes. Uber. Self-driving cars. What happens when you mash the three together? I give you the self-owning car. A car, <laughs> a car that pays for its Toyota lease, its insurance, and its gas by giving people rides. A car that is not owned by a corporation. A car that is a corporation. A car that is a shareholder and owner of its own corporation. A car that exists as an autonomous financial entity with no human ownership. This has never happened before. And that's just the beginning. I can guarantee you that one of the first distributed autonomous corporations is going to be a fully autonomous, artificial intelligence based ransomware virus that will go out and rob people online of their bitcoin and use that money to evolve itself to pay for better programming to buy hosting and to spread that's one vision of the future another vision of the future is a digital autonomous charity imagine a system that takes donations from people and using those donations monitors social media like twitter and facebook and when a certain threshold is reached and it sees 100,000 people talking about a natural disaster a typhoon in the philippines it can marshal the donations and automatically fund aid in that area without a board of directors without shareholders 100% of donations go directly to charitable causes and anyone can see the rules by which that autonomous, altruistic charity works. We are beginning to approach things we have never seen before. This is not just a currency. Now let's look at how the Bitcoin community is addressing this incredible potential with their design choices and metaphors. Oh boy, it's a mess. Let's take a simple example. How many of you had an experience with a Bitcoin ATM or BTM as it's known? Okay. How was that experience? Who enjoyed it? Nobody. Great. <laughs> That's about right. What is an ATM? ATMs have been around for 25 years now. What purpose does an ATM serve? What is its goal? What is its purpose? Cash. It is a cash dispensary. Okay? So when you interact as a person with an ATM, one, you have a pre-existing relationship with the bank or financial institution. Two, you have a pre-existing balance. Three, your primary objective is to get in, get cash, get out. Twenty seconds is too long. Three clicks is too long. The most incredible innovation in ATMs in the last 25 years has been fast cash. That's it. They haven't really changed much. You press a button, now I can get cash in one click. Wow. 15 seconds in and out. 
And why is this important? Because one of the primary uses of ATMs is at one o'clock in the afternoon, a hundred people line up in front of four or five ATMs in the center of town and all try to take out twenty dollars to buy lunch. Right? You see this all around the world. And so what is the purpose of ATM? For a bank, the purpose of ATM is reducing the overhead of having a human and reducing the interaction to the shortest possible time for someone who has a pre-existing relationship with that bank. What does that have in common with a Bitcoin ATM? Absolutely nothing. So now let's look at the experience of a Bitcoin ATM. The average user of a Bitcoin ATM is someone who has never seen Bitcoin before. It is a person who doesn't understand what Bitcoin is, and the ATM is their first introduction to this currency. It is a person who does not have a pre-existing relationship with anyone in the Bitcoin space. It is a person who does not currently have a wallet, because they didn't know they needed one. Because they don't know what a wallet is. It's a keychain. <laughs> and so they walk up to this machine, and this machine has been designed by engineers to simulate the experience of an ATM, even though the experience shares absolutely nothing with the use case we're putting it to. So you walk up, and the ATM tries to give you Bitcoin in as few clicks as possible with the minimum amount of interaction. Is that a way to build brand loyalty? Is that a way to build user experience? Is that a way to introduce new users? I mean, it just throws it at you. And you're not ready for that. It's like, please open your phone and display your QR code. Like, what? <laughs> What's a QR code? <laughs> I, I don't like what well, my phone does okay, hang on a second, let me go to Google Play and search for QR code. There's an app that scans them. Maybe I should use that one. <laughs> Shouldn't use that one. <laughs> Maybe I should use a Bitcoin wallet. Oh, there's twenty six of them. Which one's the best? Well, I don't know. Oh, I'll use Circle. Oh, it requires a pre existing relationship. Whoops. I'll use Coinbase. Oh, it requires a pre existing relationship. Whoops. And now, finally, I've got my wallet, and I display the QR code, put some money in, and send me some Bitcoin, and I've got the Bitcoin. What the hell am I going to do with it? I have all these questions. Who takes Bitcoin? Where can I spend this? How do I send it? How do I secure it? Will it get lost if I lose my phone? I have no clue. Why? Because this bloody infernal machine didn't tell me anything. <laughs> it just threw the Bitcoin at me, and in 15 seconds, it's like off to the next customer. <laughs> so, if I was designing a Bitcoin ATM, first of all, I'd put it in bodegas. Secondly, it wouldn't have a lick of English on it. It would be all Spanish, because I'm going to really push the remittance model. Thirdly, the first function on the ATM would be send money to Mexico City. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Because I want people to use the Bitcoin for something. Thirdly, I'd have a big button on the front that says, Talk to a human. <laughs> I've got an internet-connected device with a forward-facing camera and a tablet screen. and I'm not using it to do video customer service. Are you kidding me? Boom! Skype! A person! What the hell is Bitcoin? Where do I spend it? Oh, sir, I see you're in the bodega on 25th Avenue. There are three stores that take Bitcoin in your area. Let me show you a brief introductory video. Gather all the children in the store, and we can all dance the little Bitcoin song. Let's watch another video. I don't want to interact for 15 seconds. I want to interact for two hours and get all of my friends to sit in front of the machine and watch the little Bitcoin videos and learn about Bitcoin. And it's got pretty colors, and it tells me where I can spend it, and it gives me suggestions on wallets, and I, it can send them directly to my phone, and it's building loyalty and brand and experience. That's not a 15-second interaction. You have the possibility of placing this device that is the first experience people will have with Bitcoin. You fucked it up from the get-go, and you have the opportunity to make this a deep, meaningful, educational experience. Here's another little clue. 
Get them young. <laughs> Get them young. On average, around the world, the earliest age at which you can open a bank account is 16 years old. By the time that 16-year-old goes to the bank, I want them to have at least six years of active Bitcoin use in their experience. Because then, when they face their first banker, they're going to be, oh my God, three to five days? <laughs> business days? What the hell is a business day? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you close at five? I barely get off work at five. What do you mean I have to pay for you to store my money? Okay, this grandpa crap, I'm not touching it with a ten-foot pole. I'm never doing banking in my life. This is ridiculous. Have you people even heard of Bitcoin? That's the experience I want. And guess what? Ten-year-olds are opening Bitcoin accounts. Do you know why? Because they can go download the app on the internet, and they can be in control of money for the first time. So, you need to have the birds and bees discussion. But you also need to have the private keys discussion. <laughs> because your ten-year-old is going to get in a whole heap of mess, trolling around the Silk Road, asking, Mommy, what's black tar heroin? Because <laughs> I just ordered some, it looked like chocolate. <laughs> Ten-year-olds will have Bitcoin accounts. And for many young people, this is a huge generational divide. For many young people, Bitcoin will be their first economic experience. And by the time they get to a bank, they will be done with banking in advance. That's a huge advantage. Get them young. <laughs>